Hello, it's Lord Slar here, and today we're having a look over the music of the Pertwee years. This is a continuation of my look at incidental music in Doctor Who, so go and check out my videos on William Hartnell and Patrick Troughton scores if you're interested. The Pertwee era brought with it consistency in terms of cast and crew, which have been pretty much absent from most of the 60s, and this was reflected into music too. Dudley Simpson composed almost all of the scores for the Pertwee stories, with only a couple of exceptions. Unfortunately, this consistency didn't bring greater scores with it, as the new synth soundtracks were often far too experimental for their own good, and Dudley Simpson settled into making some really samey sounding tracks every week. Still though, the era does have a very unique feel to it in this regard, so there's still plenty to talk about. Anyhow, without further ado, let's get into it. Spearhead from Space, by Dudley Simpson the first Pertwee story naturally starts with Dudley Simpson soundtrack, and this is still within the era in which he was producing great score after great score. While it's not exactly a piece to shout about, it does fit the episode remarkably well, and a lot of the music cues reflect what is going on on screen, lending a cinematic quality to it. My favourite bit from this score has to be the slow and subtle music that plays when the Auton comes to life during the episode 2 cliffhanger. It's really creepy stuff, and does suit the Autons very well. Overall, this is an okay score. The Silurians by Carrie Blyton. This has to be one of the most infamous scores in Doctor Who history, and it's all down to the main instrument used, the kazoo. Personally, I used to get some weird enjoyment out of this score, as I absolutely get what Blyton was going for. The Silurians are from an Earth a very long time ago, and the kazoo is one of the oldest instruments, hence he was hoping this vibe would suit the particular feel of the episode. I still think it even works in some places. However, I do recognise that it is very much an ear sore in a lot of places, and can even put some viewers off what is one of the best Doctor Who stories. For that reason, I'll have to be harsh, and say that this is a poor piece of incidental music. The Ambassadors of Death by Dudley Simpson Another Simpson soundtrack, and this one is absolutely excellent. The score has a really otherworldly feel to it, perfectly matching the mysterious ambassadors and the conspiracy surrounding them. There are two pieces of this score in particular I want to discuss. The first one is the main theme of the Ambassadors. This typifies the otherworldly feel I was talking about, mixing an air of mystery and horror. I specifically love its use when the two men are buried in a quarry after exposure to the radioactive Ambassadors. It's really horrifying stuff. The second bit is the unit theme. I have no idea why this wasn't used throughout the period, either, as it is excellent. The tune really captures the spirit of the unit with a bit of action and mystery, as they are meant to be both military and investigative. This is a brilliant score, and one of the most unique in the Pertwee era. Inferno, by Delia Derbyshire Even though this music is by Delia Derbyshire, it wasn't specifically made for Doctor Who, and is in fact stock music. It of course made sense to use Derbyshire's music in the show, given her involvement in the creation of the theme music. The music is extremely low-key, and almost never reaches a high volume. It is all gloomy and filled with despair. Derbyshire was actually inspired by her experiences during the Blitz in the making of some of this music, which definitely suits an episode like Inferno. Similar to the war, especially in that era of the war, Inferno is filled with fascism, despair, and the burning of the world. It really was a brilliant pick. Inferno already would have had one of the best atmospheres in Doctor Who, but such a perfect choice of score adds to it tenfold. Imagine how much worse it would have been with a season 8 Dudley Simpson score. It doesn't bear thinking about. Season 8 Scores, by Dudley Simpson I decided to lump all of the Season 8 scores in together, given the similarity of the music used in each episode. This was the year Doctor Who discovered the synth, and clearly there are a lot of teething issues, as some of it is way too jaunty. It does kind of suit some episodes, like The Claws of Axos, due to its bizarre visuals and atmosphere, but it sticks out like a sore thumb in episodes like Terror of the Autons and Colony in Space. The Masters theme, which is used throughout the Pertwee era, but first in this series, is excellent though. It's the first time any character in Doctor Who has had a distinct theme which is played in more than one story, and isn't actually the only one in the classic series. Overall, I wasn't too keen on the style in this series, and what I've said there applies to some of Season 9 too. The Sea Devils, by Malcolm Clark Clark's first score for Doctor Who somehow manages to be more experimental than Simpsons Season 8 and 9 work. Like Simpson, he's using a synth, but gets some very unique sounds out of it, and if there's one advantage to Clark's music, it's that it's far less jaunty than Simpson's in this period. However, that doesn't necessarily make it good incidental music. The atmospheric music, in part, is excellent, for sure, but whenever it tries to be anything more than atmospheric, it doesn't quite work for me. Take the Sea Devil's theme, for example. It doesn't have any kind of melody to it, nor does it strike any particular tone, such as a mysterious or horrific one. 
Instead, it's just kind of awkward. Not a bad score, but still lots of room for improvement. Frontier in Space by Dudley Simpson On this channel, you routinely see me praise Frontier in Space for embracing a grand-scale space adventure style, which not enough of Doctor Who does in my opinion, and the score perfectly matches that mission statement. The best part of it has to be the parts when the Doctor is outside the spaceship and is almost flung off into space. It really matches the tone wonderfully. I think it's evident that during Season 10, the teething problems with the synth had stopped, and it is used much more sparingly, and when it is used, it actually works very well. Some of the good parts of the score is whenever there's some kind of attack going on, it manages to get the adrenaline of the situation pumping nicely, and overall the music cues are very strong in this story. A great score for a great story. Death to the Daleks by Carrie Blyton Another rather infamous score by Carrie Blyton is here in Death to the Daleks. Personally, I'll always have a soft spot for it due to my love of Death to the Daleks, which was sparked by my countless rewatches of it when I was a child. However, I will be a little more objective for the sake of this video. Most of it works well. Unlike most Pertwee scores, only instruments are used with no synth, yet somehow it still manages to sound quite jaunty. Still, it doesn't stick out too badly for the most part, but it is quite far from cultivating any kind of atmosphere. The part which is shit though is the Dalek thing. This takes Jaunty to a whole new level and makes the Daleks look quite silly when they exit their spaceship to the music. It's a shame as the Daleks have the potential to be quite threatening in this episode given the ruthless way in which they overcome a situation in which they are vulnerable, but alas, no. Overall, the score isn't awful, but doesn't really do the story too many favours either. Season 10-11 scores, mostly by Dudley Simpson. As the music is mostly quite similar for these two seasons, I thought that I'd again lump them into one category, with the exception of Frontier and Death. Season 10's score, on the whole, works quite well. As I said about Frontier, Simpson worked out how to use the synth to good effect to combine it with real instruments. Even though some of the scores do sound a little savvy, they work very well on the whole. Season 11, though, in my opinion, is where Doctor Who music began to get boring. The synth was pretty much gone from seasons 11 to 17, and most scores are just Dudley Simpson using the same old instruments and playing them in the same old way every week for every episode, even when something more unique would have been far more fitting. There were a few good scores during this time, but not until the 80s would we really see a resurgence in scores which felt properly tailor-made for each story, which is definitely how I prefer it. To conclude, the Perley era has some massive ups and downs when it comes to incidental music. It begins on a high, started in the late Trouton years with brilliant unique scores, before having teething issues with the synth, and an ending on quite a boring note which would stretch for most of the 70s sadly. It definitely was a landmark era for it however, as Doctor Who for the first time had a composer who stayed on for most of each season, with Simpson who would remain on board until 1980. There still are some great scores here, which enhance the episodes marvellously, so I won't be too harsh despite some of its shortcomings. Thanks for watching, and hopefully it won't take me a year and a half to get to Tom Baker, although that seems to be how these series go, where it takes a year to get to the next bit. Whatever, I have a short attention span. Bye.